In this problem, we're going to find a power series representation for this function centered at c equals 4. And we're also going to find something called the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is just the set of all x's for which uh, the series converges. In other words, for which this function is equal to some infinite series. There's a formula we're going to use for this problem. And it says if you take the infinite sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n, this is a really powerful formula, this is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. And this is true as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this equation is true only when this condition holds. This is going to give us an interval, right? This is the same as this. This will give us, the, this is called the interval of convergence. This will not be true if this is not true. In other words, this series will diverge if this is the case. Always, every single time. So when we're finding the interval of convergence, all we have to do is just use this formula and we're good. So let's go ahead and go through this problem very carefully. It's not hard, but it does require some skill. So we have one over nine minus x. And so the first thing we need to notice is that it's centered at four. So we have one over, so notice this is centered at zero. So we want this to look like x minus four to the n. That's our goal, right? That would mean we have a center at four, c equals four. This is really x minus zero. So here the center is zero. That means we have to have an x minus four here. So what we do is we just put it there because we can do whatever we want as long as we make it right. <laughs> All right, so that needs to be there. This also needs to be a minus sign, right? Because we're trying to use this formula, right? One over one minus x. So we've got the one, we've got the minus. This is going to be our x. You, you see there's an x here. This is going to be our x. So you write this down because the center is four. You put the negative there. You say, okay, this is negative x plus four. How do you get from plus four to nine? You add five. Beautiful stuff. Let me go over it one more time. Let me just do it again from scratch because again, it requires some finesse. So you write down the one. You say, okay, the center is four. So always first do the center. So it's x minus four, parentheses, parentheses, and a minus, why? Because you want to use this formula. Then you say, okay, what do you have here? You have a negative x, check. You have a four, uh-uh, you need a nine. So you need four plus five, so you put a five here. We're almost there. In order to match this formula that's on the board, we need a one, so we need this to be a one. So in order to make this a one, what you do is you pull out one fifth. So you have times one over one minus. So pulling out five from the five is easy because five times one is five. But from here, again, requires a little bit, a little bit of finesse. That's beautiful. That's what that is. Because look, five times this gives you this. And so now you can invoke your super powerful formula. So this is equal to one fifth. And this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity. This is your x right here. You see, it's one over one minus x. One over one minus that. So it's that whole thing to the n power. We're not done. We should clean this up and simplify it a little bit. This is true only when the absolute value of this, so this is if the absolute value of x is less than one, but this whole thing here is your x. So this is going to be true only when this occurs. So this equation is true only if this inequality is true. This is gonna give us the interval of convergence, which we'll come back and revisit when we're done simplifying this. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Basically, we can raise each piece to the nth power. So this is one fifth infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of x minus four to the n over five to the n. And now we can just distribute the five. So this is the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of x minus four to the n. This is five to the one. Five to the one times five to the n is five to the n plus one. You add the exponents, super key. So that would be your infinite series representation of this function. So this function is equal to this whenever this condition is true. So now what we'll do is we will find the interval of convergence. We're gonna do that by solving this inequality. So I'm going to erase this and rewrite this up here so we can go through it. So we have 
the absolute value of x minus 4 over 5 uh, less than 1. And so let's go ahead and solve this. So you can just take the absolute value of each piece, like this. The absolute value of 5 is 5. Then you can multiply by 5. So this would be the absolute value of x minus 4 less than 5. Whenever you have an absolute value like this, you can simply drop the absolute value. And when you do that, it's really, really important to remember that you get a 5 here, and then you get a negative 5 here. Why? Uh, I have it memorized, but why? Check this out. This is a number whose distance from 0 is less than 5. So this number must be between negative 5 and 5. That, that's, the that's the reason why, right? Because the absolute value is distance. The distance of this the distance of this between 0 and this is less than 5. So this is a number whose distance from 0 is less than 5. So it's trapped between negative 5 and 5. Add 4 to all three sides, and we have our beautiful interval of convergence. So we would get negative 1 less than x less than 9. So that's an acceptable answer. Another acceptable answer would be negative 1 comma 9. This would be the interval of convergence. So our original function, which I erased, is equal to this infinite series whenever x is in this interval. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.